Hello dudes and dudesses, today we are returning to an old love of mine, the Tank Attack Iron Farm from Season 8 of Hermitcraft. It was uh, such a big inspiration for me and it inspired me to make uh, two of my most interesting farms and perhaps I think my best farm, the Iron Beast 2. And the farm that uh, Tankotech made was uh, revolutionary as always and it was visually fun. It had some problems and he struggled with it I think throughout the season to get it to work right. I've always wanted to take a look at it and see if we could make it work and uh, that's what we're doing today. We are back, and it's a couple hours later, and all 12 modules are in, and this thing is already looking amazing. This is, like, going to be another one of those farms that's just fun to watch, I think. That's, that's my thing this season, I guess, It's just farms that are fun to watch and stare at. I have no idea. Welcome back, dudes and dudesses, and here we have it. Uh, that is, except the top part, because I already redesigned that. But the bottom part is uh, Tango Tex from Season 8. That is, he made a lot of videos about the farm and live streams and so on, but he never made a tutorial. But some guy, I think he's called Grocer, and I will have the link in the description, totally insane guy he built the iron farm like a week after he saw it on hermitcraft and that's why i'm able to reproduce it uh, right here and the top part had some problems so i started by changing that because i'd made that experience already in my iron beast number one and i think i've done a pretty good job uh, i will get back to that a bit later but the bottom part is uh, tango tex uh, at least in Grocer's version, there might be differences. And this is the heart of the farm, and I'm not going to explain all of it, because you go watch uh, Tankotech's uh, video, I will link it in the description. But basically you can see you have 12 villager pots with 3 villagers in each. And if you know anything about iron farms, you know that the villagers are way too close to uh to for this to work normally so what uh tango tech did was that he said okay but uh, if a villager will spawn a golem uh, all villagers within a 10 block range will know it uh, even if they see a golem uh, every villager will know it so they won't uh, spawn one themselves they will postpone it um, and what he did was he said okay but what if i make them uh spawn it somewhere else so he took one of these parts here and he lifted it up there where they were out of range from the other villagers. They will spawn a golem, they will go down and none of the other villagers down here are none the wiser. So that's the main idea of this farm. And he used uh, dispensers with water and he used soul sand and so on to make it work. And you can see much more of this in his own farm where he explains it. But that's the idea. That's the main idea of this, that he takes the villager pod out of range from the other villagers and he spawns the go iron golems up there and he leads them away up on top. You might have seen uh, some farms, uh, later farms that do something of the same that has this set up with uh, moving villages up and down. But at the time it was absolutely revolutionary and the original idea I think was Tango Tex, even though a lot of people have uh, made other ways of doing this later. This is the original. Now the farm, at least in Gross's version, do have problems. If you if we make it night and you look at the beds, you can see there are empty beds. And studying this uh, during a long period, I noticed that some of the villagers were taking damage when they were waking up. They were actually uh, hitting the dispenser above them. As you can see, it's always in the same place. Uh, it's the same empty beds. And they just stood up in the bed right there. 
and they hit the head on the dispenser and took a little bit of damage and a little bit of damage and eventually they died. So I changed that in my design, my redesign, and uh, we don't have that problem anymore. And this may not be a problem that Tango Tech had because uh, the, the way that villagers get out of bed has actually changed since then. So maybe that it's a new thing, but at least in my version, it works now with the way the mechanics works uh, presently. I also noticed that sometimes the villagers on the outermost bed kind of disappeared and I uh, watched them drop down on the ground. So I encased this in glass so that's no longer uh, an issue and I've done that more consequently in the new farm over there. Uh, another thing that I had an issue with was building this in survival. It's not easy. If you look at all these uh, chains right here and these signs, uh, doing this in survival is, is uh, very quirky to work with. Uh, it's, uh, the, the chain are out in the middle of uh, mid-air, so you have to have a block in there and then put the chains on and so on. And this is sign on sign on sign. So I just redesigned this in, uh, in my version of the farm, so it's easier to build in survival. Now, as I said, uh, Tanko Tech developed this uh, through the season and in the beginning he had a zombie going around in a water chain right here in a water stream and he changed that up because that was unreliable. So he made this hopper chain instead and uh, he had a zombie up here that uh, was used to scare the uh, villagers. So they spawned uh, an iron golem that went upstairs. But down here he had a uh, zombie as well to make sure that at night they got out of bed so they were standing in the same place in there uh, and the water stream and the soul sand could push them upstairs uh, right in there. But the problem is that a zombie doesn't uh, scare that long or basically a zombie scares eight blocks away. So some of the villagers uh, in the furthest in the beds furthest away from the zombie didn't get up. This guy, for instance, he wouldn't get up. He would stay down there and then two villagers would go upstairs. And normally that's not really a problem in an iron farm. I tell people all the time, as long as all of them sleep, they can actually communicate with the sleeping guy somehow. So normally in a normal iron farm, they would be able to spawn an iron golem. But this is different because they're, you know, uh, pushed away from where they are. So he uh, eventually decided that uh, instead of a zombie, he would use a pillager. And a pillager scares villagers uh, 15 blocks away, and then you would get uh, all of the villagers to stand up when they saw the pillager, and they would be ready to be pushed upstairs. Now, I know my audience, and something that they always say when I make a farm with the pillager is, can we use a zombie instead? And in this case, you could not. So I have actually fixed that as well. In the, my version of the farm, there's only one zombie, the zombie on top. And uh, I hope that makes it easier to, to build for all of you in uh, survival. But just because it cannot be said often enough, this is the way to do it. It's not harder than this to tame a pillager. You can see you just j uh, jump down with him in a one wide hole. He won't be able to hit you. And you just stand there AFK basically till he have used up this 370 something durability of his uh, uh, crossbow. All right, now let's move away from this, the original design, at least the bottom part of it, to my redesign over here. And the top part, uh, uh, I've already told you about how I redesigned that. So it's easier to build in survival. And that's the same part as over there. The bottom part, I've made some changes. If we go in here, you can see that there's not really uh, much going on. There's no sumpy in the middle. And you can see uh, there's no chains. And uh, you can see there's a glass tube all the way. So we got rid, uh, got rid of the chains and we got rid of the signs on sign on sign that's really uh, annoying to build in survival. And it works. You can see they get pushed up the tube and we have glass on the sides, as I talked about, so no villagers will uh, fall out uh, by accident. And I've tested this for like hours and hours and 
No villagers uh, take damage uh, anymore from uh, the dispensers. Uh, there's a glass block underneath if they do stand up in their bed at night. And uh, this is to make sure that they don't stand up uh, right there, so they won't get pushed up in the tube. So it's redesign, it's a trial and error, and it works. I've tested it, as I said, for a very, very long time. I changed the bed layout. Um, this is how I prefer it, uh, with uh, the head of the beds all pointing into the place where they uh, uh, co collectively stand and it's just easier that way i think and it works more reliable if we return to the top part for a second we can see up here there's a golden uh, burning there <laughs> um, and the iron ingots will be dropping down here and they will be collected in these hoppers and i just put a uh, um, a dispenser pushing a dropper pushing it out to a cobweb so they will sensor and fall down to the chest you can make that uh a hundred chests down there or you can make the hopper uh, lower to the ground today you will probably make a crafter and then craft it into blocks so you won't need so much storage oh isn't this just a beautiful sight <laughs> oh yeah there's nothing like the smell of burnt iron golem in the morning now in this farm we still have one zombie because you need uh, one zombie in an agro farm to spawn iron golems so he's up here but if you notice down there there's no zombie anymore how have we achieved that because we still need the villagers to stand up at night and stand in the middle of uh, the ground between their beds so that they will get pushed up by the soul sand and the water and we have achieved this by for whom do the bells toll? A bell, yeah. A bell will alarm every villager to get out of bed and that's what they do. So they just get up every time the bell tolls and they stand in the middle and this works uh, maybe not 100% of the time, but just as much uh, or efficiently as if you had a pillager in there. I've tested it, it gives exactly the same result uh, so that's how we achieved that it's annoying to listen to but it uh, saves one uh, pillager and i know a lot of people out there will appreciate that they don't have to get a pillager to get this farm to work and as you can see it works and they do sleep uh, you have to know that just a microsecond in bed uh, is enough for the villager to have uh, slept all night. That's just how the game works. So uh, there's there's no need to be uh, worried about that. If we look at one cell right here for a little bit, you can see that guy sleeps, that guy sleeps. Now it's only that guy who hasn't slept. Maybe he has slept already. Okay, he sleeps there. So there's enough time between the bell toes that all the villagers will sleep through the night. Now this part down here I haven't touched at all, it's still the original Tango Tech Tech and it works reliably with the soul sand and the glass and it's a beautiful design. There's so much more to be said about this farm but instead of me saying it I think that you should go and watch uh, those episodes from season 8 from Tango Tech because this is his design and uh, don't go out there even though you're my subs or you're coming to my channel and say that this is a mine the fab iron farm because it isn't i've done some small redesigns and maybe have uh, uh, make sure that it's up to date with some of the mechanics but it's a tanko take farm this is the tanko take tower of power and it's been a huge inspiration for me as i said probably my uh, best iron farmer the one i like the most the iron beast 2 is totally inspired by seeing tanko take make this in season 8 and let me just show you the iron beast 1 which is a four pot iron farm right here and the iron beast 2 which is a super simple farm i'm really happy about this it's really simple to build in survival it's a four pot farm as well and i think it's a beautiful design but this is too a beautiful design i can just envision it uh with like a skyscraper around it or something like that but guys 
that's about all I have time for today. So thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new, uh, subscribed. And if you're just one of, or not just, if you're one of the regulars, remember to like. And uh, I'll be putting out new videos as much as I can. I have uh, a special situation right now where I'm working a lot away from home so i cannot make that many videos but i'm very inspired and i can play minecraft and i do have a lot of farms lined up i know some of you probably came for the fab 4.0 it's coming and i have some other interesting farms as well but that's all for now see you in the next one this isn't you know revolutionary or anything but i think it's more fun and I, it was more of a challenge to see if i could design a farm that works completely differently. And I think we're gonna have that here. <laughs>